Okay, hi guys and welcome to the show. And today we are finally taking a look at Fortis, a hugely important Swiss brand. And now, of course, before I get into this, I've got to do a wristwatch check. I'm not sure if you can see that. I'm wearing my new Timex Navi Harbor, a fantastic retro inspired, kind of vintage inspired, I should say, um, aviation watch. Really having fun with this. I'm due to review it soon, so stay tuned. Anyway, back to the review. So uh, the watch we're taking a look at today is the Fortis B42 official cosmonaut chronograph. Now, Fortis have an amazing, illustrious history that uh, serious horologists will really, uh, well, I'm sure you're probably already familiar with the brand uh, and their importance to um, the history of watchmaking. But let me just run through it very quickly if you're not familiar. Now, they were founded in 19... 12 by Walter Volt in Gretchen, of course, which is Switzerland. Now, what makes them really important to the history of not just horology, but wristwatches especially, 12 years after the, the, its establishment, uh, Volt set up a production company with the hugely important John Harwood. Now, John Harwood, uh, the true horologist uh, among you will, will already be familiar with that name. He was the inventor of the first automatic wristwatch, and this was in 1926. It's commonly referred to as the Harwood uh, bumper automatic wristwatch. And Rolex, of course, took this uh, idea and developed it um, into the 360 turning rotor later on. But it was actually Fortis that uh, were the first to uh, manufacture automatic watches for general release. And they also uh, were credited with introducing the world's first waterproof watches. Uh, these were the Fortissimo models. Uh, Fortissimo in Italian, uh, of course, means uh, very strong. But the history of Fortis does not stop there. In 1962, uh, they released the Spacematic Automatic, which was constructed uh, to hold up in extreme conditions and temperature changes. Uh, the watch was then tested by seven uh, members of a US space mission. In 1994, Fortis introduced very strict and endurance tests and in the same year the Star City Training Center chose Fortis as the official cosmonauts chronograph and uh, became uh, issued standard equipment. The Fortis automatic wristwatches have been proven in space many many times and since 1994 Fortis has been the exclusive supplier of manned space missions authorized by the Russian Federal Space Agency. And in 1997, the same watch, the uh, Fortis official cosmonauts chronograph, which we're having a look at today, became the official watch of the German-Russian space mission MIR-97. Just a, a phenomenal amount of history there. I mean, we're really scratching the surface, uh, but a hugely important brand. And that is why I'm, I'm well, I, obviously I'm very, very excited. So. This really is a space-going uh, automatic watch. The reference number is 6381011M. It's also known as the B42 Cosmonaut. There is also a titanium version. Today we're looking at the stainless steel version. So let's quickly get the specifications out of the way because there's quite a bit to talk about here. We'll start with the dimensions. Now it is a big watch. The diameter is 44 millimeters. We have a thickness of 15 millimeters. At lug to lug, we're looking at 53 millimeters. And then lug width is 20. So really, really quite a beast, uh, a monster. But I gotta say, um, as we'll get to discuss in just a moment, it's not without um, reason. The entire watch is a brushed stainless steel. There are no polished surfaces on this whatsoever. Look at the, the screwed lugs. Now this just illustrates exactly what this watch is all about. Everything on this watch has been designed very, very deliberately. It is a true tool watch. And, you know, I know uh, people ban that word about, but honestly, this has been designed to the most minute detail for task. This particular version comes on this three link bracelet, which actually, I must say, it has quite a nice fluidity to it. The bracelet also has 
Uh, now I'm not going to call this a diver extension, but it is an, a, a space suit uh, extension, I guess. We have a safety fold over on the clasp. It is of course signed. Nothing too uh, exuberant there, but very, very solidly made. We have micro adjustments, but look at the screws on the links. It just shows you that how everything on this watch has been really turned up to 11. They're, they're very substantial and I must say much easier to adjust. The case, just like everything, is brushed with the only exception is on the case back. The case back has a bead blast finish just to kind of um, contrast the brushing. Very subtle and of course we have the uh, Russian um, space agencies insignia there. A very solidly done 120 click unidirectional timing bezel there. No play whatsoever, extremely solid with a coin edge, easy to grip, slightly overhangs, so very, very usable. The glass is of course sapphire glass and it has anti-reflective coating on both the inside and the outside. We have a signed crown with the Fortis crown logo, two really big chunky pushers. What is interesting here is the crown is not a screw down, however, this has 200 meters water resistance, which is just phenomenal. Again, everything has been over-designed, turned up to the 11. It's a, it's a chronograph you can actually go diving with, and especially with this uh, exaggerated, well, not exaggerated, but purposeful, ultra high contrast dial, the ultimate in legibility. It's very, very practical for, for pretty much any task. But the, for me, the real magic is the dial. I just love the layout. It's extremely utilitarian and down to business. Everything has been thought out so carefully and placed there very specifically. We have the three subdials with, of course, minutes, the seconds for the main time, and then, of course, hours at the bottom. We have a day date complication. We have beautiful stick hands with, a, again, high contrast with the end in Super Luminova. The numerals are also done in Super Luminova and glow wonderfully. They are painted white, however, they glow a very nice green. And we also have hour markers as well. There are two triangles uh, each side of the date and the day, which is very interesting indeed. They are also illuminated and we do have a loom pip on the bezel. Now, these triangles, th and, and, and this is a perfect example why this watch <laughs> is, is so clever. Now, when you pull out the crown and adjust the date, the arrow upwards indicates the direction you turn the crown to change the date next to it. The arrow downwards indicates the direction you change for the day. Very subtle, but a nice, nice touch. Really nice, I mean, pure class. What's interesting is the crown itself is not a screw down and still it has this high water resistance rating. Uh, I mean, I can't imagine what the seals are like in there to, to keep that water resistance. It must be just like everything else in this watch, really, really well designed. The detail on the dial is exquisite. We have a tachymeter running around the chapter ring, which of course is a, a wonderful complication uh, that you definitely need uh, in a space going uh, watch. We have a minute track on the inside. And then I love the positioning of those Arabic loomed numerals. They're not cut off, which is something that, that it's a pet peeve for a lot of people. You, you will be quite um, surprised at how many people complain about that. The triangle with the two dots at the 12 o'clock for orientation, not that you need it with the numerals, but again, this, <laughs> this watch always goes the extra mile. If we start the chronograph, the main seconds hand of the chronograph has this fantastic, quite dazzling uh, neon orange. And it's matched on the hour register at the six o'clock. It's also neon there. And for the minutes at the 12, neon again with the little hand there. So, you know, it's corresponding. So you know that the chronograph is referring to these two subdials. That color hasn't been chosen just to look pretty, although it does. Uh, again, it's, it's to provide the ultimate contrast to that monochromatic color scheme. This particular neon orange is a color in the color spectrum that is extremely visible in low light. 
Uh, so it's an obvious choice. It just happens to look really, really cool and it just adds a little bit of flair. The sapphire glass is flat, uh, so you don't really get any distortion. Uh, the reflective coating does a fantastic job. Uh, not that <laughs> not that you really need it because of course the dial itself is a beautiful and matte black. So the movement is of course the Vajou 7750. Uh, I think it's a, a perfect choice for this watch. It's a proven movement. It's been going since 1973. Uh, it's a 25 joule movement, operates at 28,800 vibrations an hour, has a power reserve of 44 hours. The chronograph can record up to 12 hours. We've seen this movement a million times before. For this, I think it's absolutely perfect. It's reliable, it's trusted, it's robust. Also, it keeps costs relatively down, affordable to maintain, and it hasn't been tarted up with unneeded decoration. This, again, is very, very utilitarian in its purpose. Uh, signed it with a, with a lovely little custom rotor, and I believe it says something like um, the world's first manufactured uh, automatic wristwatch or something to that effect. Just proudly displaying Fortis's main achievement. Accuracy wise, uh, we're talking about plus five on this particular piece. Uh, really, really great. Quite a lot of complications going on, but with this beautifully proportioned layout, extremely easy to, to distinguish and read, it packs a hell of a lot in, a lot of features. So let's pop it on the wrist and see how it wears. Okay, and there we go. Now, it is a big beast. It overhangs. It's Obviously, it's too big for me. Um, however, I gotta say, usually I go on a rant about watches being far too big, but this is big by design. This is supposed to be big. It's designed for, well, it's, it's supposed to be for astronauts. It, they're gonna be wearing helmets. It's got to be tough. It's gotta have high water resistance. So the case needs to be large and it's gotta be extremely legible. It does all of that. So it's excusable. I'm not gonna have a go about its size. Would I wish it was smaller? Of course. The weight is a bit of an issue. It's 214 grams on the bracelet. Uh, and also it's a little bit top heavy. That's probably the only negative, mainly due to the bracelet being 20 millimeters. Quite strange for such a, uh, a, a large watch. However, it does sit quite comfortably, mainly due to the these claw-like lugs, which angle downwards. Only wish I was a larger chap so, <laughs> so I could justify this piece. The presence it has is uh, very solid and robust feeling. Um, and I, I really do appreciate it. it. It's also unpretentious, quite macho, but without being gaudy or loud, like, you know, like the flashy uh, big watches of, of, of that typical um, oversized trend that we saw um, in recent years. I would recommend getting the titanium version. That's obviously going to be lighter than this st uh, stainless steel because this is a big, big watch. I think it's actually the largest watch I've had on the channel so far. Uh, but other than that, <sighs> outstanding. So let's just summarize it quickly. Okay, so the positives, well, it's a very cool design. And, and it's kind of funny because it's designed uh, not to be good looking, although I, I think it really is. It's no nonsense aesthetic is actually quite charming. And the beautiful thing about something that, that is designed with such purpose is that it's versatile. Um, sure, it's not gonna slide under a cuff, but uh, the color scheme would just lend itself to pretty much any NATO strap and indeed different bracelets. I think wonderfully. Uh, that is certainly the advantage of a of a very classic looking and tastefully done uh, true, true tool watch like this. It does everything that it's supposed to, 110%. I also love the fact that it's very usable. I mean, if it can survive space, it can survive pretty much anything in normal life. I'd love to see a manual wind version. I think uh, something a little bit thinner and uh, perhaps you know 42 millimeters in diameter i i still think you could get away with it it's a watch that really demands to be used i, I could definitely see you know law enforcement or soldiers using something like this in the field it's got very much its own distinct look uh, having said that it pulls a lot of influences from very classic Flieger uh, watches. In many ways, this is probably one of the best alternatives to the Amiga Speedmaster. 
uh, it's a true space going watch, but yet isn't a cliche. Also, it's got to be said that the quality is certainly there. The finishing is first class, crisp, clear printing, everything is as it should be. It is utter perfection. Again, punching way above its weight uh, to a luxury standard, I would say, even though I think to call this uh, a luxury watch would be an insult to its uh, true purposeful design. I think Fortis is a deeply underappreciated brand. At the price it currently is right now, I think it's incredible. It's, it's, I would almost say it's underpriced. That just goes to show how realistic and down to earth Fortis is. Negatives, well, I think the weight is the only issue. I'm, like I said, I'm not gonna say that it's too big because it is supposed to be big. I think it would be a mistake for me to say it's too big. Uh, the weight is an issue and I would recommend, highly recommend going for the titanium version. It's gonna be significantly lighter and more comfortable. But yeah, it's a, a beautiful beast indeed. And I'm really, really thankful. I've got to give a quick shout out to Fortis. They actually sent this in directly from Switzerland, which is just fantastic because it shows that they're embracing YouTube, they're embracing the community, they're forward thinking, they're not stuck in the past. And it's wonderful to see an independent brand with such history, with, with such importance uh, to watches, really thinking ahead. So big shout out to them. I'm definitely going to be covering Fortis a lot. Uh, I feel that they need to be talked about. Anyway, guys, uh, that's my review of the Fortis uh, B42 Cosmonaut. Incredible. I, yeah, fantastic watch. I'm seriously going to consider going on a diet of, of, of ice cream and donuts just so I can wear this piece. Uh, thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.